What's up guys? Welcome back to the Reverse Hive Mind. Today we're back with some more Lost Judgment. And we're going to talk to uh, Yui Mamiya here and maybe break out the jumper cables. I guess we'll see. Let's see what she has to say. Then let's get this over with. What do you want to know? Everything. Let's start with the video. Any thoughts you'd care to share? I found it on a flash drive in Kitakata Sensei's room. Or should I say, Kawana's. I take it that means he's the one who recorded it. Yes. That means Kawana already knew back then the rest of you were bullies too? Yes. If that's the case, then why was Shinya Kawai the only student thrown under the bus for it? Kawana-san didn't show that tape to anyone else? We had no idea we were even being taped. We didn't find out about the video. Or the reason he sat on it so long until way after graduating. Why exactly did he sit on it for so long? Kitakata-sensei said he kept it so... So he could teach us for the rest of our lives. What? If that video came out at the time of the incident, I'm sure life would have been hard for us then. After all, Kawai was exposed online, and that would mean millions of yen in compensation for damages. Yeah, but you guys could have wound up in the same boat. No. I mostly would have come across as dumb kids he roped into helping him. We might have caught some flack, but people would chalk it up to kids and their cliques and move on. But that's only how I would have gone if it had come out while we were still teenagers. You're saying circumstances are different now? I have a child now. A husband, an upscale apartment. If the world sees that tape now, I'll lose it all. And what do you think would happen to my son? The son of a woman who drove a kid to attempt suicide? His life would be ruined. That recording is more than kids being cruel. Mitsuru jumped from the school roof that very night and is still in a coma today. I get it. You have that much more to lose now than when you were a kid. So with the video as leverage, Kitakata Sensei is continuing to teach his formal, former pupils. Yeah, I mean, unless he's still blackmailing her to this day. Um, yeah, I guess we'll find out what he has to gain out of it. Same for all my classmates. Kurokawa Academy is a prestigious school, after all. Most graduates go off to great universities and land high-paying jobs. One started his own company. Others have families. And they're all in your position too, huh? If that video gets out, they lose everything. Exactly. Do you get it now? He waited for all of us to get what we wanted in life. Just so he could threaten to take it all away. And when that time came, he started contacting us. Every student you see in that video. When was the first time Kawana approached you? Five years ago. I was out on a walk with my son. And he came strolling up out of the blue. At first, I barely recognized him. His eyes were so hollow. Then without so much as a word, he took out his phone and played that video. He's a psychopath. Well, all you kids tormenting Mitsuru looked pretty psychopathic to me. You're so perfect. An angel who never once acted out of line. Never lashed out at someone weaker than you or sided with the group to shut someone out. Everyone does it. We were just lucky enough to have some creep teams picking on some kid who couldn't take it. Why did this have to happen to me? I'd say it's because bad things happen to bad people. You'll sling your barbs from a safe distance, but once you're on the other side of it, curl up and play victim <gasps> you said it was five years ago that Kuana showed you the video reminds me of something Shirosaki sensei was looking into what there was this guy I think his name was Shinya Kawai something about him getting snatched off the streets about five years back <gasps> Kuana steps back into Mamiya and the others' lives five years ago, around when Kawhi was abducted. Which means... Then it was you guys. 
You're the ones who abducted him in Kamrocha <coughs> and murdered him. No, it wasn't us. We could never do something like that. Wasn't us, huh? So you're not denying he was murdered after all? Who was it then? All Sensei told us was to find Kawhi somewhere in Kamarocho and bring him back with us no matter what it took. Did Kawana tell you what he wanted with him? He needs to be there when you all beg for forgiveness. That's all he said. And if we refused, he'd leak the video. So we all went to see Kawai, but he wanted nothing to do with Sensei. Considering he'd cost him everything, that came as no surprise. But doing nothing would cost the rest of you everything, too. Yes. So we had to force him into our van. After he put up a fight. Yeah, that lines up with what the local eyewitnesses said. So then what happened? Nobody's heard from the guy since. We were directed to bring him to a wharf in Yokohama. And that's where we begged for forgiveness. After that, he said we were free to go. All except Kawai. So you left him there alone with Kawana? We had to. The day after, I got a message on my phone from Sensei. What did it say? Nothing. There was only a video. It was of all of us, pushing Kawai into the van. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all of our faces so clearly. How we covered Kawai's mouth as he screamed for help. I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction. As I was watching it the first time, another message came in. This time, a picture. When I saw it, I just went cold. That's when I knew I would never be able to escape him. It was a picture of Kawai. Dead. Anyone who saw those messages would think we killed him after shoving him into the van. And that's how he got his real leverage on his former students. Since then, we've been at his beck and call. No matter what he tells us to do, we wouldn't dare refuse him. He's giving you orders? That man! He forces us to help him with... He makes us accomplices to murder! Murder? They're being forced to help Kawana kill people? This case is finally cracking wide open. What the hell? Murder who, exactly? Any bullies involved in suicides. That's who Sensei's got it in for. Anyone he could find across the country. He doesn't even care how old the case is. If a student commits suicide, and bullying is suspected as the cause, he'll turn up. As far as I know, counting Kawai, I think... I think he's killed at least seven people. Seven? How's he doing this? So his idea of justice is killing bullies? Across the entire country? He said that's the only way we can atone. Anyone who drives someone to suicide must always face justice. Until society comes to terms with this, he says we'll keep getting our hands dirty. That way, we might be able to save the next few Mitsurus before it's too late for them. <laughs> Not sure I should say this out loud. But I'm kind of rooting for this guy now. Mm, yeah, let's not. So was the <laughs> murder of Hiro Mikashiba part of that agenda? We know Mikashiba drove Ahara-san to suicide four years prior. That has to be why Kuwana let Ahara murder him. And how you found your role in establishing his alibi. Not just me. Grabbing Mikoshiba required a good number of people. All the people who pinned Ahara down. And even the ones who filmed it, they were working for Sensei. So that's how it went down. We had an unspoken agreement that we wouldn't directly take part in any killing. He just makes us his accomplices somehow. Like luring a target or digging a hole for a body. But the one thing we can't ever do is turn him down. If we do, he'll send his video of us abducting Kawai to the police. And then Kawai's body will turn up with our fingerprints all over his corpse. And we know that because he's hidden Kawai's corpse in a freezer somewhere. He's 
preserving one of his murder victims? So as long as he has that, you're wrapped around his finger. Mitsuru Kusumoto's case 13 years ago was the catalyst that drove Kawana to executing bullies. Hiromi Kishiba, who Haru murdered, was just one of many. And behind him, Kuwana was pulling the strings all along. Yeah, that's really some deep, deep planning. He really has all of them by the balls. Like, not even a little bit. I know, technically, Mamiya doesn't have balls, but figuratively speaking. But seriously, he has major leverage on all of them. Sounds to me like Kawana's had one thing on his mind for 13 years. Sitting on that video and becoming an Eugene Cho handyman was all in service of his real motive, killing off bullies. He's dragged all his former students into this hell until the day it destroys every single one of you. Is today that day? We'll see. I'm still curious about a few things, though, if you don't mind. What? There were these scumbags chasing down Kawana called RK. What part did they play? Strangely enough, they never came up once during your confession. So tell me, why'd they come for Yoko Sawa? That I don't know for certain. But Sensei did reach out to Yoko-chan about six months ago over the phone. He was asking her about the suicide at Serio High. The suicide at Serio High? You must be talking about Toshiro Ehara. The lawsuit played out like no bullying took place, right? That the school wasn't responsible. But Yoko-chan was a teacher there, and Sensei was able to get the truth out of her. How did he do that? What did he say? From Yoko-chan's perspective, she and Sensei were both just teachers dealing with students attempting suicide. I think that's why she let a guard down and told them everything. After learning the truth, Sensei believed Mikoshiba needed to be held accountable. So if Sawa-sensei hadn't talked to him, Ahara wouldn't have gotten involved? And none of this would be happening in Ijincho? Possibly. No, this isn't right. Sawa-sensei didn't know Kawana's identity or his objectives. She thought she was just talking through her problems with a sympathetic ex-teacher. At the very least, she sure as hell didn't deserve to die for that. It's not like we're the ones who did it. Pretty much are. Who is it? Block number. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kawana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair is pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. He told me to meet him alone. You can let mommy san go once I confirm he's there. You gonna be all right by yourself? Well, he already knows mommy sans with us. I'm guessing he was watching us from somewhere. And I can't afford to do anything that would piss him off enough to make him disappear. Uh, got it. Oh. We'll take care of this end of it. Shouldn't you move your ass? Oh, hey gosh, he don't ever change. Okay. So, appears we are back in Kamurocho. Higashi's uh, arcade, so <laughs> super gunman, very cowboy. I like it. Oh, hey, suspicious. Hey, what could this mean? This squirrel's receiving a transmission.
Signal's close. Should be around here. There we are. So there's a lantern at the source of the signal. Woody pop. Okay. All right, so we are back in Camaracho after quite a while. Um, oh, it's random. Anyway, we'll head on down to the Yagami Detective Agency as there are no side quests currently in Camaracho that I'm aware of. Yeah, nothing here, so... We'll head down to Yagami's office. Let's fight these guys. Okay. Quick and easy steamroll there. Um, snag those items and... Yeah, we'll hit Ikenari Steak. And just top off the health. Okay. Wild Hamburg Steak. I'm starting to feel it. Pretty tasty. Thanks. Okay, so... We'll head down and see what Kuwana wants. Uh. Huh, that hurt less than I thought it would. Anyway, so we'll see what Kuwana has to say for himself, considering he's practically a uh, serial killer uh, that goes around killing bullies, apparently. A real life bully hunter, as it were. <sighs> oh, my ass starving. <laughs> Involved in a traffic collision? Eat Pretty some tasty. sushi. Thanks. <laughs> Eat some sushi after crashing into a car, and you'll feel better. So down to the Yagami Detective Agency we go to see what our bully hunter has to say for himself. Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now, are you going to hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is going to get what we want. So, you going to make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kawana. You can let Mamiya-san go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart-to-heart. -heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito-san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa-sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? 
Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw in the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this, I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. The very day before Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting. So I warned him not to overdo it. And eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah. I guess that's what I did. Now it's too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei, how could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore. But back then, I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds. But the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened. So I decided to do my homework. The next day, I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. So that's how he got the bullying video. He'd set it up himself to record the room remotely. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawaii started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawaii forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawaii and myself, the callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far, you put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. 
He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that, even though Sawa Sensei ended up paying for it. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawakun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it. But at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case. Despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. So Sawa Sensei was the one who told Kawana I'd showed up at the school. <coughs> the police are a pain in the ass. But when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First I found out where the two of you would be meeting up. At that little cafe. Then, I hired the Leo Mock to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yue Mamiya. They hadn't seen each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa Sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. Or to a like. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started. So I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> the day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course. But she wouldn't give me a straight answer, no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawakun, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? 
Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? Believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest, I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed how our case seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mami Akun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura-kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. I wouldn't count on that. And pursuit time. You won't get away. Wanna really just ask me if I had anything else to do? <laughs> Literally no. on the truck. <laughs> Fuck you, Kiwana. Don't give up. Hold up. And tackled. Oh, of course he pulled us into an ambush. You guys again. You really need the masks. Come on, Kurakawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kiwana! What are you going to do now? 
What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. Oh, Kawana. I'm gonna love beating the absolute shit out of you. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. Answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Okay, then. Time to learn your lesson! Come on. Yeah, no. What kind of lesson is this? Oh, hell no. Yeah, you guys wondering rats? I'll use them. Yeah, them a nice little ass whooping. And of course, Kiwana Kiwana. took off. Oh no, Kiwana! See you to stick around, Mamiya san. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, since Kawana couldn't stay, it sounds like you're not out of the woods just yet, huh? Wah wah. Hey, that's the end of chapter nine. Thirteen years in the past, Mitsuru Kusimoto plunged himself into a coma, sealing his fate alongside Kuwana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuwana sets off on a path of vengeance, and the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call. To what he's done. Catch a tiger, preferably by the toe. Getting your identification on record, so you won't be a threat to us anymore. Uh, what? And I think you owe us after everything you've done. Expect me to come collect one of these days. <sighs> your carriage awaits, Mamiya-san. Don't tell me we're going back to that dingy arcade. <laughs> we sure are. But try not to hold a grudge. It wasn't us who abandoned you. He's not wrong, you know. <sighs> Higashi, you already called Sari-san and the gang, right? Yeah, I let him know what's up. They said they'll head over when they're ready. Did Shirosaki-sensei say anything? <laughs> well, 
She was pretty stunned when I told her who Kuana really is and what he's up to. Sounding a little smug there, Higashi-san. Taking credit for the detective work you didn't even do? Back me up here, Yagami-san. Whatever, man. Kuana got away, and that's <laughs> all that matters. Still, the task in front of us is finishing Sari-san's case. We have to clear up Ahara's crime once and for all. With Mamiya-san's help, of course. <sighs> Finally, I'm ready to get some answers. Well, we still got time till Shirosaki Sensei gets here. Why don't you take a breather, Yagami san? Huh? That'd be okay? Sure. I'll call you once everyone's here. Yeah, a break sounds good. By the way, Higashi, is anything unusual going down in Kamracho lately? Anything involving RK? Yeah, about that. My guys were saying things have been a little too quiet since yesterday. Soma and Akutsu are out in Ijincho, too. When they come back, they're in for a rude awakening. And make them pay for what they did to Kaito Aniki. Make them pay? Aren't your Yakuza days behind you now? That's not the Yakuza in me talking. That's just a problem I'm gonna be the solution for. Uh, isn't that exactly what a Yakuza would say? Fine. Think of it as getting revenge for a brother. Uh, I'm doing the right thing, damn it. Yeah, maybe it's just how you're putting it. Besides, what's the matter if I was Yakuza? I've got my own code, and I'm gonna do right by me. Whatever you say. Much as things change, they stay the same. I mean, I get where Higashi's coming from. He wants to make uh, Soma and then pay for putting Kaito in the hospital, so makes perfect sense to me. Even if it is exactly how a Yakuza would operate. Since I'm out, might as well check on how the city's doing. I'll kill some time somewhere. So I guess we're supposed to go wander around uh, in uh, Kamurocho, and we will do that next time. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.